Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Tina Jha. Getting basic services should not be a struggle for the common man. This is what Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has emphasized upon. He believes that the ultimate test of good governance is the improvement in the quality of life of the people and the democratic government should be close to people, be very responsive to their needs and adopt a caring and facilitative role. Recently, while releasing a book titled Bringing Governments and People Closer by M. Ramachandran, former secretary to the government of India, the vice president said the expectations of the people boil down to easy, transparent and hassle-free systems and procedures in public offices. He suggested that essential services should be streamlined and citizen charters like the right to information must clearly specify the time within which any service can be availed. He also underlined the importance of reforms in governance and said they have to be implemented in letter and spirit by all the stakeholders to bring about a transformation in people's lives. So what are the kind of reforms that are required in governance issues? How can procedures and processes be streamlined? And what is required to be, do uh, to be done to have a more, in fact, a more trust-based governance in the country is what we will discuss on this edition of The Big Picture. Joining me are two special guests who will share their perspective with us on the program today. I'm pleased to welcome on this edition of The Big Picture, Dr. M. Ramachandran, former Secretary, Ministry of Urban Development, Government of India, and also the author of the book, Bringing Governments and People Closer. Welcome to this edition of The Big Picture, Dr. Ramachandran. And I'm also joined by Mr. K. A. Badrinath. He's a senior journalist. Welcome to the show, Mr. Badrinath. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ramachandran, let me first congratulate you on your new book and also let me begin the show with you. If you could give us a brief insight into the kind of problems that you have spoken about in your book that a common citizen encounters in public offices that you also have experienced in your long career. Um, thank you uh, for inviting me. Uh, let me start by saying that um, in line with the uh, maxim of uh, minimum government, maximum governance, through which very many things have happened, very many things have started changing. Uh, technology is coming, becoming helpful to people. But beyond that, what I'm trying to say in this book is, um, how do we ensure that the ordinary person living in some far off village or in some corner of a city in a slum or so, how can that person avail of whatever the government is supposed to provide, be it a service, be it a document, be it a certification, whatever he or she is due to get from the government, can that person get it in a hassle-free manner? Yeah. Uh, there are any number of studies, surveys which talk about corruption. There are certain areas and departments where if someone has to get something done, uh, there are lots of issues involved. Even fundamentals like the, the, the basic title to a uh, property or a, or a land, even in getting that, there are, there are hassles. Getting registration done is a big hassle. So there are so many areas still where a lot needs to be done to make sure that governance happens in the right way, because that is where the face of the government is seen by the ordinary person. I always make a distinction between people like us who have access to maybe officials, access to technology, sitting, sitting in urban areas, we are probably able to get things done in a much better manner. But what about that person for whom we may say that, yes, this service is available online. Now, where does he go for this online facilitation? Uh, I, I quote the example of one of the chief secretaries saying in a conference uh, last year on e-governance that in his state, uh, internet is not available all through in a very fluent manner all across the state. So there are issues like that. It's one thing to say that technology has become a facilitator. Digitalization has taken things closer to people. But that is one aspect of it. Other than that, there will be certain areas where a sort of contact with the government functionary or office is a must. And we know of systems, I mean, I've been part of the system, so people may start laughing at me, why is, why is he pointing this out? But we all make efforts to bring about the changes. What is required is um, anything which uh, we are entitled to, be, be it an urban resident or a rural resident, that should be available in a hassle-free manner without having to have this uh, struggle of going, contacting people and asking, to come back again and things like that. How can that be achieved? And I think that's a possibility in our scheme of things because on the one hand, technology is a great, great facilitator. 
technology should be accessible to people and for an illiterate or semi-literate person, what is the facilitation which can become available so that um, the real advantage of technology is there and access to whatever he wants is there. That Absolutely. is what I'm trying to focus on. And I think um, if all departments try to list what needs to be done, which are the areas where the common people have more interface and where they are harassed, and if you can make it, make it an agenda and take it forward by the 75th year, I believe we would have achieved a level of governance or a system of governance, which I would say can even be a model for uh, world systems. Absolutely. So even though technology has been a great enabler, there are some gaps that still exist. And that is something that we will focus on in due course of the program. But uh, let me go across to Mr. Badrinath now. So what we've spoken about is that get, getting basic services should, of course, not be a struggle for the common man. And that is what has been highlighted by Dr. Ramachandran in his book. That is what people expect from a, a democratically elected government. So perhaps this was the view that the Modi government spoke about when uh, the Prime Minister time and again highlighted on maximum governance, minimum government. Mr. Badrinath, so has this approach over the years made any kind of difference towards making procedures easy, simple and hassle-free for the common citizen? Oh, well, uh, a lot of changes have happened in the last six years, since you referred to the Modi government's uh, commitment. Uh, I would say that in six years, a lot has changed. But uh, two, three things come to my mind immediately. When it comes to the user experience or the consumer's experience, or the stakeholder's experience that we are talking about. Whether you go for a driving license, or whether you go for getting a ration card, or whether you get an Aadhaar card, whatever it is. These are the basic services one would require immediately. Or whether even getting a you know, address endorsed, whatever it is. Or even getting an education certificate, or even a caste certificate to avail the services. That kind of thing. But my guess, it's just a looming guess, that you know, uh, technology perhaps has in a little bit tweaked in a way where things are getting complicated. Just go to any driving license office in the uh, road transport department of a state and you will see mess all over. So, uh, the commitment and conviction of the Modi government is unquestioning or it is completely committed to getting good governance at the grassroots. But when you go to particular departments to get your work done or even if you are sitting in your drawing room and you want to do it through your computer, the access that you get is not easy. Because my guess is somewhere down the line, software, hardware issues, human interference, these things seem to be boiling down as to, I mean, they're trying to, they may be defeating the purpose or the object with which you want to make consumers' experience much easier, or the delivery of services much easier easier across the country and across sectors. It's more than 100, 150 services that we're talking about. Statutory backing is there. Yeah, different states have, you know, passed uh, a right to services acts from uh, 2010 onwards. But actually on the ground, when you go for implementation, then there are issues that uh, you need to sort out. And okay. one Human interface, definitely it has been minimized. If I, if I, I will not agree to the point that you know, it has been completely phased out. But the human interface has been reduced in a big way. Second part is technology, yeah, well, most welcome. Technology is supposed to help you. But the systems have been complicated in particular areas so badly that the consumer who goes to get that service is again will have to go to the transport office to get a driving license or you have to go to the uh, Department of Education to get your uh, certificate or you want to go and get your caste certificate. So this... Uh, Consumer experience may be different in different states. 
the point I'm getting to is that unless the states chip in in a big way to streamline or you know remove the uh, you know roadblocks. Uh, we will not be able to actually achieve what we call as the best practices that we are seeking to achieve uh, in uh, the new India formation that we are planning about. And that too when we are heading, uh, rightly Mr. Ramachandran has uh, uh, you know, referred to 70 years of independence. When we are going towards that, perhaps in next one year, we have time to you know, sort out these little, little things which we need to put together so that our experience is much, much better across uh, you know, uh, both urban, rural areas as well as uh, semi-urban areas where consumers will have to perhaps even pay just to get access to the system. So this okay. is not required at all. Okay, Dr. It has to be done by so your mobile. So the intent has been there, as uh, Mr. Badrinath suggested, that uh, there have been quite a number of changes as well, if we talk about in recent years. But there are some gaps in implementation that still remain and that need to be filled. What, according to you, are the factors that are still impeding a time-bound, hassle-free delivery of services? Uh, I, I do not hesitate in saying this. Uh, within the government system, probably there is lethargy visible at various places, number one. Number two, when you are part of the system, you probably don't experience the, the problems the other person is facing. Only when you are out of the system, you uh, tend to experience it much more. So two things would be very critical. Transparency about whatever is to be done. If I have to apply for a certificate or an entitlement, it should be very clear as to what is it that I have to do and when will I get it. Second is accountability. Let's not talk in terms of the heads of department being accountable. Accountability has to be at the local level, whether it is a village level or a local body level or a town level, whatever it is, it should be very clearly stated that for this service, this person is accountable or this level is accountable. And it has to happen, the time-bound nature of it. As I said, um, it is that is the face of the government which becomes available to the ordinary person. I've also suggested, um, uh, it's, it's not rocket science, so to say, but I've also suggested some or two uh, new measures which one could think of. One is, uh, we have different types of index about governance, this, that, and all that. So let's have an index whereby the common man's access to availing a service is also an index whereby it can be assessed whether, uh, to what extent, common people have been uh, able to access this in a hassle-free manner. That's one. Number two, I also suggest um, taking the services of um, independent, neutral people in the society who could oversee where, what the problem is and then bring it to the authorities concerned immediately so that the required improvement is brought about. So a participative arrangement whereby people who are living in the midst of society but who are respected, who won't try to take advantage of the system would also be in constant interaction with people who need services and get back to the system as to what changes still need to be done so that it remains hassle-free. That would become very important. So we have to take one or two more steps beyond what we have done so far. Uh, technology is one factor, but go beyond that and have an oversight mechanism also whereby this is constantly monitored and improvements are brought about, not just by making statements or uh, writing articles and things like that. It has to happen. So the, the will has to be there. And I always quote this example of through Swachh Bharat mission, if we could do, you could get toilets built, if we could make cities and towns open defecation free, it is possible. So similarly, it has to be on a major mission mode whereby each uh, government functionary has to feel that this is my responsibility. I cannot shirk my responsibility. I cannot uh, get away from this. And if I do that, I'll be held responsible. I would even suggest some drastic action. If there is accountability and if it is not happening, we have to think in terms of drastic action because gone are the days when we could um, preach from somewhere that people should do this, people should do that. But people should at the same time also have what they are entitled to in the uh, time limit within which it is laid down. There, of course, as Mr. Badrinath also referred, I would bring in the additional point of it's one thing to say that technology has facilitated, but has technology really facilitated for that person at the end of the queue, as Gandhiji would say, or the ones who living live in the villages, internet availability, access, the guidance, 
Uh, I don't think all of them are so savvy that they can they can immediately avail of these services. So they will have to be dependent on some people. So let us not bring in dependence on another category or another group of people to avail of the services and and you know uh, complicate matters. So we have to get rid of that as well. And absolutely right, it's not just the central government. Central government, state governments, local governments all have to list what is it that they have to do and make sure. And I would uh, suggest a tight uh, monitoring mechanism as to whether it is happening or not. Anytime there should be scare about if um, a member of parliament or an MLA or a senior functionary raises this complaint that so-and-so service was not available, it should be taken as a serious issue. And that type of a fear also has to come about in the system so that um, uh, these basics are sorted and we can go beyond this. Okay, Mr. Badrinath, so quite a couple of suggestions made there by Dr. Ramachandran. I think the two important uh, factors that need to be taken into account primarily is streamlining of procedures, simplifying the processes, and of course, also greater accountability to public. These perhaps are uh, the need of the hour. Also, time-bound delivery of grievances among people. So how can these be done? What is the best way to achieve this? So, well, uh, my guess is uh, that uh, time-bound delivery of services easily said than done. Uh, because uh, many a time, what I've, definitely things have improved, no doubt about it. If I compare it from uh, my school days or college days, and now much, uh, much, much water has flown down the Ganga. The point here is uh, that, you know, time-bound services as per the statutes are defined. But finally, is that happening or not is the issue. I'll give you a simple example. Say, for example, if you go to, uh, you know, get a driving license, what happens, you will have to, you know, upload a lot number of forms, lot number of information, so much. The entire thing is so complex, unless someone intervenes, you cannot get it done. If that is there, that intervention, that human intervention which you want to phase out is continuing today. This is leading to some amount of corruption also at very local level. But again, it's time consuming. What I can do in, uh, on my mobile phone, if it has to be, I have to go to the concerned office and do it there on his computer or if I have to you know, avail the services of an agent. Uh, it, this is not reform, no. So, when I talk about governance reforms, leading to services being provided to you seamlessly, it means that my, it is my right to get a service even as per the statutes that have been, you know, put in place by uh, senior bureaucrats like uh, Mr. Ramachandra. So, point I'm trying to say is that uh, the systems need to be simplified if I have to get time-bound services that you're talking about. Second part to this story is that local governments need to be sensitized. Third issue is your experience is varied in different departments. In some departments, it is very simple. You go there, just get your work done, just type in all your particulars and whatever uh, you need to get, you get it on your mail and you're done with it. And even if you have to pay some money, I mean, uh, statutory wise, I have no problem. But if you have to pay underhand to get these services done even today, this is the issue which is going to be sorted out. I think more than inordinate delays and corruption, what needs to be addressed on priority is the insensitivity among staff at public offices. Many a time what we see is that, you know, people also face difficulties and a lot of hassle in obtaining even a death certificate. And this is where the distrust on government agencies grows. So how can those in the government, especially those who are dealing with the public on a daily basis, be sensitized? Uh, I think more or less all the personnel get trained about uh, how they should be functioning, how they should be working and things like that. That needs to be uh, further refined in the sense that uh, even the public service is something about which each functionary has to understand. That is not something which someone will come to me and then I will deliver. 
it's my job to deliver it without the person coming to me to the extent possible. And that should be the sort of mantra which should uh, guide the person concerned. Second, I've also highlighted this point. There are various training programs which are organized for government functionaries. I would just say that in a simple manner, that should be shared with the public. That this is what this fellow sitting at the counter, either in a bank or a government office, has been uh, advised to do, how to handle. And that should be known to the public, so that the public person, when he or she has to face a situation where this fellow is not helpful, he can point out to him or to his next superior that you say this is the training given to him, but this is the way he is behaving. And this attitude of you know trying to find some shortcoming or so, that has to go, that can go only when a constant oversight happens and when everyone knows that my work is being watched and I cannot get away by saying that this was not there, that was not there. We can look at, as Mr. Badrinath was referring, we can look at the passports example. Did we ever think that passports will become such an easy process uh, years back, but now it has changed. But even in the passport process, in my book, I have made to a small reference, the, the, the couple go along with a two-year-old child go for a passport and the two father and mother get it. But for the two-year-old child, it was said that there is verification. Now, this is this sounded to me very ridiculous. I'm sure the, the external affairs ministry has some logic as to why there should be a verification for a two-year-old child. But that should be known to the person concerned. The parents went, they should have been told in the morning itself when they went and interacted that for the child, this is a requirement, this will take 24 hours or 48 hours. But then the parents were um, in, a, in, a, in a troubled situation because that means the police will come to their house. Do you, we don't know when will the police person come and then what all will happen. So why should it be so? So the procedure has to be clearly laid down. It should be made known to people. And he told me he went through all the... Uh, literature available as to what will happen in the case of a child and a verif verification has to be done. He was uh, nonetheless wiser. So uh, I, I agree. I mean, when we lay down um, uh, procedures, I would say procedures should be tested immediately at the ground level. Yeah. And that is where I talk about an independent mechanism different from the government system where a new program or something is drawn up and there is a procedure laid down. Because by laying down procedure also, we sit within the offices and try to do it. It's very rarely that uh, the ordinary person's perception is built into the scheme of things. And if there is a discretion, to what extent the discretion can apply? Some could take it to extremes and make life miserable. Some could uh, take the guise of discretion and say that I cannot do this because I am not allowed to. I would say certain amount of discre discretion in certain matters should be permitted and it should be transparent. It should be openly stated and that person should not be held accountable for that. That you, Why did you apply the discretion? So I think after all, we are all part of the same country, except for criminals or so. There are the rest of the people, they are entitled to certain things that should become available and it should be explained and it should be built into the scheme of things. That is what is important. So I, I, I also recall the earlier instance when I was working in the hill, hill areas, the, the amount prescribed for construction of a school building for the plain area and hill area was the same. Whereas in a hill area, you have to get material transported through, not through cars and <laughs> through, through trucks and things like that. It has to go on a pon pony back or something like that. So there is an additional expenditure. Yes. It was not built into the scheme of things. Then suggestions come. But then changes uh, cannot happen immediately because it is a long process of, you know, going back to the system to get the approvals, to get the guidelines revised and things like that. So we have to have mechanisms whereby when something new is introduced, the procedures are introduced, it is transparently available. To and the procedures have to be in sync with the local area yes. as well. And, and, and people like Mr. Badrinath could give a feedback. There is something lacking in this. This is what needs to be corrected. Certainly. Mr. Badrinath, one final comment from you because we are talking about the need for a time-bound delivery of services and also redressal of grievances of people. Can something be done at the policy level? Will a legislation to this uh, effect make things more effective when we talk about a trust-based governance? Okay. Policy level, I think uh, uh, we can uh, ha have few options perhaps uh, the policymakers can think of. One issue is can we outsource some of the services uh, to uh, private agencies and bring about multiple uh, you know, user experience in terms of, say, for example, a government service, a government agency provides a service, 
a private agency provides a service or there could be a joint venture kind of a situation where uh, services can be provided. So why not? Why should driving license be the prerogative of uh, one uh, state uh, transport department? Yes. It can be given out. And uh, you, can, uh, vet, you can vet all of the service providers and you can do it. If direct benefit transfer can be a big hit, you know, uh, removing all kinds of corruption at every level and the money can go directly to the beneficiaries through one Jandan Yojana account. Why can't the state services be reformed? Why can't the local services be reformed at all? Because the linkages are important. More than sensitizing the consumer or the user, it is to sensitize the people who are running the system is more important. Because unless they come to provide these services, it cannot be done. Absolutely. So if we want to bring about transformation in people's lives and a trust-based governance as well, uh, there are certain reforms that need to be brought about and of course, one among them is time-bound delivery of services. So with that, I'll have to call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you to both uh, my guests for joining me on the program today and sharing your perspective with us and our viewers. So that's it from us on The Big Picture today. Just in case you missed the television broadcast, you can also watch it on YouTube and Twitter, and you can send in your feedback and suggestions to us as well. Thank you for your time.